The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Get your tickets to the Night Pants Nation Tour, all right? We got it rolling off here already. Coming at y'all, all all right? Baltimore, October 23rd. Brea, California, October 28th. Arlington, Virginia, November 12th and 13th. Cleveland, December 9th through the 11th. La Jolla, December 17th through the 19th. All right, there are other dates up on the website. Go to ryansickler.com, get your tickets. There's 2022 dates up there already, but you can just go there and see them, all right? The YouTube channel, youtube.com. Uh, go subscribe, please. It, it means nothing to you and everything to me. All right. You hit it, subscribe. You're watching anyway. Just hit the damn subscribe button. It matters. All right. It, and it's free. It's free. You don't have to buy shit. You don't have to do anything. Just hit that subscribe. All right. Uh, and if you can't just get enough honeydew once a week, you got to hit that Patreon up. All right. It's the honeydew with y'all. It's five bucks a month. That's it. Okay. You get the entire back catalog. You also get the Honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost. If you sign up for a year, you get over a month free. All right. And just recently, we had somebody. I mean, come on, man. Night Pants Nation is solving fucking cold cases, y'all. Who else? Who else in comedies out there? Their fan bases are solving cold cases. Nobody. Five bucks a month. If you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, please submit it to HoneydewPodcast at gmail.com. And hopefully we'll get to do an episode with you. All right. Uh, the Honeydew Podcast, that's the website for the show. You get your merch. The ringtones are there. Y'all ask for the ringtones. They are there. All right. Now that's the biz. You guys know what we do over here. We highlight the low lights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Uh, I'm very excited to have here. First time on the Honeydew, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shane Gillis. Hey. Welcome to the Honeydew, hey, my man. man. That's great. It's very Thank nice you. to have you here. Thank you, man. In your Notre Dame gear. Yes. Are you a Notre Dame guy? I'm a fan. Fan. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You yeah. did not go to Notre Dame. I did not. All right. No. We're going to talk about a lot of shit, though. Sure. Uh, but before we do, please plug, promote everything right. you'd like. Uh, just put out a special on YouTube, Shane Gillis, uh, live in Austin. Uh, it's on Gillian Keeves' YouTube channel. We got sketches on there, all that. And uh, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. All right. Nice. Um, congrats on the special, by oh, the way. Thank you I know very it's much. getting a lot of love right now. It is. And that's, that's nice. Good. Yeah. So I want to, we're going to talk about obviously SNL, all that stuff. But before we get into that, like, tell me a little bit about you. Like, where are you from originally? What's your upbringing like? All right. Uh, I'm from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's just up the street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's dude. close. And uh, I went to middle class suburb, grew up uh, Irish Catholic family. Went Your to, parents together at the time? Yeah, yeah, Still yeah. together? They're still together. Okay, good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, went to Catholic school after that. Went to college. You have brothers, sisters? I have two older sisters. Two older sisters. Yeah. All right. Where'd you yeah. go to college? I went to a bunch. Uh, I, went to, <laughs> <laughs> I went to a bunch to get a bachelor's degree in history. Uh, <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> so I went after high school. I went. I played football. So I went to West Point. Oh, right, you played football in high school first. I played high school football. Did, did you get recruited? Yeah. All right, you did. You get a scholarship. Well, West Point, it's full ride. Oh, that's right, full no ride. Matter what? But yeah. yes, I got. I was. I was offered a couple places. Chose West Point. And what position are you? I played playing? offensive line. Okay. I played tackle in high school. Left or right? I was left tackle in high All school. Right. The but money guard. Tackle. College was guard. I was too, a little. Well, small. Too slow. Yeah. yeah. Too slow and not tall enough college you gotta be like six eight yeah who's the guy who was playing next to you uh you know what's funny at army the dude uh with the steelers oh uh who we who's just the, got uh, actually the raven signed villanueva yeah, villanueva. yeah the raven now signed him that's yeah. how little i know these guys i quit uh i was at west point for about three weeks <laughs> <laughs> wait i'm not being I'm you not, quit the college too <laughs> oh i fucking got out of <laughs> not it. just the football dude it was boot camp so uh yeah i guess it's yeah military. it was boot camp yeah. And you're trying to do boot camp with football at the yeah, same time? Yeah, and was, it was funny because while you're getting recruited, they're like, football, all the football players, we get an escape. We get to leave the military stuff and go play football, and it's like, nice. Turns out, college football sucks. <laughs> it was way worse than boot camp. I was like, let me go back Wait, to let me tough. go back to fucking walking. <laughs> walking. All, all boot camp was at West Point was like walking and standing. Now, that was the first couple of weeks. I'm sure it got harder, but I got out of there How do you before get out? it got hard. How do you, you get out? You just cry. 
<laughs> All you have to do is cry. <laughs> they're like, get this bitch out of here. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're 6'3", 300 pounds crying, they're like, all right, you're fucking going home. I was like, I want to go home. That was really it? Yeah. And I there's mean, no dishonorable discharge no, or anything it, like it's that? It's just honorable discharge. You're it's just honorable. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because day one, you swear in. Yeah, I imagine. So I was a yeah. fucking soldier, technically. Yeah. And uh, I've told this before, but it's funny because technically I did join during wartime. If you volunteer during wartime, you get a medal. And I was honorably discharged. So technically, I technically I'm a decorated veteran. Do you have a medal? <laughs> no, I didn't buy it. You could have bought it. You could order it. I could have ordered it. It would have been fucking insane to order that. <laughs> I'm a decorated but to veteran. Steal, to steal valor, but <laughs> yeah. technically legally doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I got there and it was funny when I quit. Cause you get the I, first day, I knew I was in trouble because I was like fucking around. We were like doing the head shave thing, all that. So you're just standing in line. It's me and a bunch of other dudes. We just got our uniforms and shit. You just get you get underwear. You get tidy whities. That's your fucking uniform. You got to walk all day in tidy whities. All day you're in sweating. that sweating. It's hot as fuck. It was summer. Uh, but while we were standing against the wall, everybody's getting their head shaved and shit. And I started like fucking around. And a drill sergeant heard it and was like, "Who who's yelling?" And the dude next to me was like, hey, ratted you out? He fucking ratted I'd me out right away. I was like, dude, too. what is this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't belong there at all. I just wanted, I, you know, I was in high school, so I was like, this would be cool. Play like at Notre Dame, at Texas A&M, all these schools. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I was, I was dumb. I was a dumb pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the worst way to go into boot camp. <laughs> A fat, a dumb pussy. Dumb, fat, dumb pussy. <laughs> what a terrible way to enter the military. <laughs> you exited pretty quickly. Oh, I was out, dude. Fat, I got in there pussy. and I was like, I'm fucking, this was a huge mistake. Well, it was funny too, because I knew I made a mistake. Like yeah, night, wh when, when I knew were you I like, made a mistake right, like right. two months ahead. So after I committed, I was like, this is, I fucked up. But you know, I was I was 17 or 18 at the time. So it's, it's new, like fucking up like that. I didn't know what to do. And, uh. I remember the night before boot camp, I was in a hotel like with my parents because your parents drop you off at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. So I was just laying there with them, and I was like, geez, this is in a hotel room. And uh, Were they supportive? Did they think this oh, was a they good fucking, thing? They, or they were like, hey, it. we don't have to pay for college. He got oh, a full they, ride. They we're, were so proud. So proud. So that was, yeah, that'll come back with the yeah, SNL I'll stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last time. <laughs> They've been proud of me twice. <laughs> And both times, catastrophic failures. <laughs> I mean, that dude, seemed to last about the same, the same amount, amount of time. dude. Same amount. And, uh, oh, shit, I mean, truly, dude. I've had six weeks in my entire life of my parents being proud. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they, so while the night before boot camp, I called my friend Jamal, who was playing D2 somewhere else. So I called him and I was like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, I'm just playing Madden. We're going to go to a party. I was like, fuck. I fucked up. Like, I'm in a hotel with my parents about to go to boot camp. I should have went D2. Should have went to another school. Could you have? Yeah, I could have played D2. Yeah. 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 I, the other schools I was going to was like 1AA, 1A. Was um, anyone else, other schools looking at you at the time? Yeah, for sure. Who else? Uh, like, in hindsight, who would you have picked uh, that was well, knocking? So I'll tell you, after Army, I transferred to Elon and played okay. one season of college football. Okay. So no matter where I went, I was going to quit. I quit after that full season because uh, college football did suck. But, uh, yeah, I should have went one double A. I should have went to, like, Duquesne or a smaller. And you think you would have played out there? I don't know. I probably wouldn't have finished the, the, the one season I finished at Elon if I hadn't quit gotcha. West Point already. You can't quit, like – Twice. Back to back yeah, in like a can't. month. Yeah. <laughs> Although I would have, dude. It sucked. So uh, when you hit the realization that you're going to leave, what bothers you more? Like telling your parents about this? That was annoying because they were coached. Because everybody that goes to West Point cries and tries to quit. Everybody does. Like every when you go, basically everybody. Obviously there's dudes that are like patriots that like yeah, want to be yeah, in the military. Right, yeah, yeah. But uh, everybody that goes there has like a 1600 on their SAT and is kind of like a dork. Mm -hmm. So when you get into that competitive, like getting yelled at in the morning, dorks fucking spaz. And uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so yeah, the, co the parents were coached to say, you can't come home. Got it. So when you call your parents like, hey, I'm quitting, they're coached 
by like drill instructors and recruiters to be like, say no, say they're literally not allowed to come home. So my parents, when I called them and I was like, I'm coming home, I'm fucking quitting. They were like, you cannot quit. And I was like, you guys are fucking losers. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're a loser. I was so mean, dude. I was so mean. I was like, you guys, are, you're a fucking teacher, mom. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was it was really regrettable stuff, dude. <laughs> it was embarrassing. I mean, dude, imagine crying on the phone <laughs> with your There's mom. There's a line of other dudes Bro. crying, waiting to get yeah, on with your mom. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up, mom. Shut up, mom. You fucking, you're a loser. <laughs> and then they finally, the next time I called, they were like, all right, we, of course you can come home. We were told to say that. Uh, but yeah, they. it was funny because when they, this was very funny. So when they drop you off, they you drop you, they drop you off in regular clothes. And your parents say goodbye to you. And then at the end of the day, there's a parade of all the new cadets in front of all the parents. And now they see you marching in a uniform, head shaved at the end of the day. So during that parade, I see my mom like waving a flag, like one of those mini yeah. flags. And I walk by her and she was like, yes. And I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <Literally> <laughs> dude, <mouth>. In <laughs> one hour. <laughs> and she literally went like this, dude. She goes, <laughs> she dropped her flag. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. I was like, I am fucking out of here. And Oh, uh, shit. No, it was a huge. And what was funny is like while you're quitting, I was still getting letters from people back home that were like, we're so proud of you. This is incredible. And I was like, you're already out. I'm out, dude. You're already sitting on the (laughs) couch. (laughs) I was getting letters from people that were like, we love you. We're proud of you. And I was like, I'm going to community college. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, so that was a pretty big uh How did your, failure. Did, did they ever talk to you about it? Like, did uh, they tell you they were disappointed or you just knew? No, you could see it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my dad. Who was, was more wearing, disappointed, like, your dad? I would imagine my dad. Was he, he a military guy? No. No. That was another thing. He said that. I was like, what if I fucking die? Like, I was talking to him about it. Because one day Temple recruited me. Temple was recruiting me and Army was recruiting me. And I told my mom I committed to Temple. And she cried. And I was like, oh, you guys, like, because what when, when Army recruits you, they get your parents. You know what I mean? What they, do you mean? They, they tell your parents, because if you're getting recruited to Army, chances are the other schools you're getting recruited to at the D1 level are shitty. You know, it's like Eastern Michigan, Temple. Right. Like r- normal schools that anybody can get into. Army is like going to Ivy League. Right. Uh, so... When they're recruiting you, they're like drilling it to your parents. Like, your kid's going to be a fucking loser if he goes to Eastern Michigan. We can make him a senator. I see. So your parents are like, oh, you got to go to Army. Right. You have to go to Army. So when I told my mom I committed to Temple, she like was sad. (laughs) And I didn't commit to Temple. I just wanted to see what she would say. And she like cried. And I was like, damn. So like they get your parents. So my parents were like, West Point's the best place ever. Uh yeah, they're like, they're all in. My dad had like army hats. But I remember one time I was talking to my dad about army and I was like, what if I fucking die? And he's like, is that so bad? Is that so Dying bad? Dying for your country? That's the end and I was like, you fuck, you're a salesman. <laughs> Don't tell me that. That's the end? <laughs> yeah. That's so bad. Yeah. I was like, what if I die? He's like, is that bad son. to die for your country? I was like, you didn't fucking serve. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. So there was a lot of that. <clears throat> so you get out and then you I get out I transfer immediately I go this also sucked because I quit early enough and West Point's uh, boot camp is early enough that you start in like June so I technically quit early enough to have time to go make another school's oh okay preseason so I left boot camp and went straight like a week later to Elon University in North Carolina because their coach at the time was at Lehigh and he was recruiting me there and uh, so I get to Elon, and that fucking, that sucked. That was harder than boot camp. I mean, football is, college football is harder than West Point's boot camp. I'm not saying like Marines or anything. In what ways? You physically get beat up. Okay. Like you're going up against gr- like jacked, giant dudes that are physically dominating you for four hours every single day. So that sucks. Just beating you. Oh, man, dude. I was, and I... I was like, and you're going up against I'm big D tackles and, yeah, and all dude, that. Well, shit. even the safeties would like come down, dude. Guys that were like safeties. 180 pounds would just fucking level me, dude. I sucked. I fucking sucked. Oh man, and it's fucking such a Ronnie Lot over dude, here. It was Jesus such a Christ. harsh reality because you go from high school where I was six three, two ninety in high school, 
I was bigger than everybody. Yeah. I could literally just walk towards someone and they'd move. And then you get to college and like those dudes are huge. So the reality is like you go from being the best guy on your team to the worst guy in the conference. The conference. <laughs> I was so yeah. bad, dude. When I my O line coach at, at Elon fucking hated me. He hated me. And when I quit, I was like, I feel like I'm probably like one of the worst guys on the team, right? And he was like, Yeah, you're probably. <laughs> like, yeah. When I quit, he was like, Yeah, you're fine. I, you're doing the right <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was rough, dude. It was rough. You're out there giving that's your whole, That was my whole identity, my whole life. I was like, I'm a football player. I'm a football player. And then you find out you're not. And it's like, oh, fuck. And then what you do know? you do? You pivot to what? So I left Elon, went to Harrisburg Area Community College. So this is all in the span of like a year and a half. My parents think I'm going to be like a senator at West, but like a general. Mm -hmm. A and general. Like a, year, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a year and a half later, I'm like failing at community college, sleeping on their couch, washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, so I've been down before. Like it, the SNL thing was, it was bad, but it was yeah. nothing compared. Like that was bad. That was like, my dad was like, you're a pussy. And that hurt. You know what I mean? And he was right at the time I was being a pussy. I was quitting everything. And, uh, yeah, I ended up getting into Westchester University, just studied history. That was it. And you got your bachelor's? Got a bachelor's in history for no reason. All right. So Graduated then, when I was like 23 or 24. Now, are you into comedy at all during this time? I just started comedy at okay. Westchester. So when I, like uh, like 22 years old, all right, 21, so 22. 22. And what age do you get SNL? Th two years ago. So I was 32 or 31. So 10 years, nine years. Yeah. You're in. 31. But see, so, when I when I started comedy, it was only in the summer because I would do it at home, not really at school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I would take like six months off, a year off, like shit like that. And then uh, sold cars. And then I just left Harrisburg, moved to Philadelphia to do comedy like full time. So I was in Philly for like four years. The first year I moved to New York, that's when I got SNL. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. first year in. Yeah, there. like right away. Yeah, it was cool. So talk talk to me about that because was as a kid was SNL always a goal? Uh, when when I was a young kid, yeah, I was mm -hmm. like Chris Farley's the funniest guy of all time, right? Uh, and then Will Ferrell, I thought was easily the funniest dude. And then uh, yeah, but once I got into stand up, like got into stand up, I was like, I'll never get SNL. Like that's not. I knew who I was. I wasn't, and I knew what they were. So I was like, "That'll never, I'll never get that." And then I got, I got to New York, and my agents were like, "Hey, SNL wants to give you a packet, a writer's packet." I was like, "I'm not going to be a writer. I didn't do it." They're like, "SNL wants you to audition." I was like, eh. "Now, what like, were they seeing that caught their eye?" Oh, uh, JFL. Okay, I did, I did pretty well at JFL, and at and you Cluster did stand Fest. up there, or yeah, did yeah, you do just stand up, just stand up, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, they were like, "We want you to audition straight." to the main stage. So I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. Wow. And I was still like, I'm not going to get it. Like I remember being in the waiting room with my friend, Reggie Conquest. He's, he's a comic. He's very funny. We were together waiting for this. And I was like, I'm never going to get this. Like this is, like I didn't care. And what I was your really audition? Care. What did you prepare? Uh, just five minutes of stand up. You That's didn't have was. characters? No, no or? characters, nothing. Just stand up. And uh, and this yeah. was still to be in front of the camera. Or are they still considering you to write or both? Well, or? yeah. When you audition, they're not sure. But once I but you knew you didn't want to write. Yeah, I knew I didn't want to write. Mm -hmm. But once you go through the audition, and they're like, if they offered you a writer's job, it, if they would have given me a writer's job, like I sat down with Lauren, and he was like, I'm not sure if you're going to write or be on the cast. If you're a writer, it'll just be to show you the ropes of how things are done here for a year, and then cast. But then he called me and was like, straight, we'll go straight to cast. All right, so let's go back. So you did yeah, five yeah. minutes. Who's in the room? Uh, it's an empty room, which is fucking <laughs> brutal. brutal. Yeah, dude. It's like, and also I, I was saying how I didn't care. Like I, I truly was loose, didn't care. And then as soon as you walk into the room and see the stage, you're like, oh, fuck. This and is, is it, are this you right there wild. on that stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're okay. standing dead center on the main stage where they do the monologue and all that. And there's just a camera right in front of you. But yeah, right when I walked out, it all it all changed. There's I went, no execs in the dark. There is. There is. There's all. a table of like Lorne Michaels oh, he's and in the there. writers, like Michael Che and some of the other executives and all that. There's just a small table to your left of probably like eight people. And uh, there's just a camera probably from like me to you or that wall. There's a guy behind it that's like three, two, one, go. You just say your name and then do five minutes. 
and were like, they laughing? My and hand all? was shaking, so I, I had the mic dude. against my chin. Nah, he just yeah, held it, it was stuff. crazy, dude. If those, <laughs> ah, that's a great. You trip. know how they release like those? Like, yeah, I've, I've seen guys' end, auditions, yeah. dude. If my audition gets leaked or is released, it'll it'll be funny. Is, my hand was truly like. Do you hear them laughing at all in the yeah, dark? So, so you're told the whole time they're not going to laugh. Like it's going to be quiet. But the first thing I said, they laughed. So I was like, oh shit, I'm doing pretty well. And then, like, I couldn't not – you're supposed to pretend they're not there and you're talking to the crowd. But anytime they'd laugh, I'd be like, eh. <laughs> like, I couldn't yeah. couldn't help it. Disco is a clean skincare brand. They're based in Austin, Texas. And the truth is, before they reached out to me, I was already using their product. All right, your boy over here has got the face of an afternoon nap. I want to try to touch up these bags under my eyes. And I'd already had it before they reached out to sponsor. So I was stoked when they came on board. All Disco products are created specifically for male skin issues like under eye bags, dark circles, acne, razor burn, oily skin, dry skin, and wrinkles. Okay. Disco products are easy to use, effective, and affordable. They take the guesswork out of taking care of your skin. Their Disco repairing eye stick is formulated with caffeine, which is fancy, peptides, and moisturizer to transform those under eye bags after a long night of partying, gaming, working, or or whatever your vice may be. If you want to check out Disco and try their incredible skincare products for yourself, we have a special offer for my Honeydew audience. Go to letsdisco.com slash honeydew or enter honeydew at checkout for 30% off your first order. That's letsdisco.com slash honeydew for 30% off your first order. Thank you, Disco. Cooler weather makes it easier to miss your signs of dehydration like overheating or perspiration, which means it's even more important to keep your body properly hydrated. Making hydration a priority helps us feel healthier on a day-to-day basis and fuels us to be at our highest potential. Look, I take liquid IV every day. I put it in my bottle of water and I get out there, I walk the park, I put it in my bottle of water, I take it to the gym with me. Every day, a couple of them, I feel great. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. The company is donating 4 million servings in response to COVID-19. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDO at checkout. That's 25% off of anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code HONEYDO at liquidiv.com. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDO at checkout. That's 25% off of anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code HONEYDO at liquidiv.com. Um, I get done. I was like, I think, I mean, they laughed. I was told they weren't going to laugh, but I still, I, I knew I was nervous. Like I was shaking. My arm was fucking shaking. So I was like, that had to be terrible. I run into Michael Che that night at a show, and I was with Soder and Big J, who those were the guys I like latched onto when I moved to New York and like, followed them around. Yeah, uh, and Che was like talking to them and was like, "Your boy did good. He was funny." And I was like, "Oh man, I thought I, I thought I bombed. Like I was nervous." And he was like, "You were the least nervous by far." And that that's like, and that was the night of the audition. So I was okay. like, "Oh shit, I might have got this." And then I get a call back, and I was like, "How All soon?" Right. Three days. Oh, that's fair. Four fast. days. That's fair. Yeah. And they're telling you to come back? Yeah, you come back just to meet everybody in the office. You don't have to do the set No again. more sets. Okay. It's just me, three other people that are like up for the position or whatever. And we go around and you go room to room and meet everybody at SNL. And uh, then at the end, you go sit. The four of us sat and waited in Lorne Michael's office. And he would call people in one by one to meet them. But again, you're waiting. They always make you wait. So, like, on the audition, you just wait in a green room for, like, two, three hours. For real. Before you audition. Yeah. It's like a technique to make you nervous to see yeah, how you I do. Yeah, I saw an interview with Chris Rock where he talked about how another comedian he knew at the time was like, fuck this, I'm not waiting. And he left. But he stayed there and waited and yeah. waited. Yeah. What a dumbass. For I mean, it's SNL. It's not <laughs> yeah, it fucking, a, you know, some <laughs> fucking cheese that's audition. Yeah. And, uh... So you're sitting in this office. We're all waiting. I was talking to the other comics, and I, I I remember them. It was right when a Chappelle special came out. It was two years ago, like exactly two years ago today. And uh, they were like shitting on Chappelle's special. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not like these people. They're like, I think it was kind of transphobic and like all this stuff. And I was like, dude, I'm never getting this job. So they call the first person in. They meet with Lauren. They leave after like a minute. The next person gets called in. They leave. The third guy, they're like, you don't even have to meet him. You can leave, which that was pretty brutal. 
Oh, really? They yeah, they, they, they were him. like, you can leave. He Damn. didn't even get to go in to meet Lorne. And then I sat another like hour and a half by myself in this room, and I was like, oh, I definitely got it. Like I, At that point, I knew I got it. Uh, Why? What are you thinking? Because the three people, there are rapid in- succession, in and out, see ya. And then it was just me waiting. To talk they, to Lorne. Yeah, and there's girl. He has girls that work for him, and it, they, there's like a separate room of just you and these girls. And they were kind of, they're like, "Oh, you're waiting. Oh, That's really? good." Yeah, they were. They were very nice people. Everybody was nice. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody was cool. And then, uh, yeah, go in, meet with Lorne. It was cool. He says, What's "I'm he gonna." Use, he was like, "I'm gonna use you. I'm just not sure if it's writing or cast." Okay. And then on nine eleven, I got the phone call. That says that was Lauren, and it was like we're gonna put you on the cast. I was like, nice. "Oh shit!" On and then, the cast, and then September twelfth, they released the information that I was gonna be on the cast. Okay, so they did have about one day to vet me. So I think that's probably where it was difficult. It's look for someone who does you know weekly content. Exactly. Good exactly. luck vetting anyone that's yeah. been doing that for ten years. Uh, you know, yeah. Good for luck sure. finding that, but also you got to be looking for it. Yeah, you know, especially if you're going back that far. Yeah, so uh, you get so so the eleventh you get the call, twelfth yeah. hits the trades. Yeah, four hours later I'm getting same day, it. same day. The I day, didn't realize it was so the I literally, same day. I the day it, the it got announced day. that I was on SNL, I got like everybody I've ever known in my life was calling me. It was like congratulations, proud of you, we love you. And then it's funny because I didn't have time to respond to all of them. So like, no, I, I'll have texts. Today, like somebody will text me today that I haven't heard from in a while and be like, hey, congrats on the special. And then the last time they messaged me or texted me, it was like, congrats on SNL. This is incredible. And then the next <laughs> one's like, don't worry, buddy. We believe in you. <laughs> like three hours later. <laughs> I mean, I was getting fucking drilled, dude. I'll bet. What is that like? What? What's uh, when? The, all right, wait. When? How did it come to you? How did you find oh, out about funny. it? So I was. So that night I had shows at the stand. So I was going to do shows, and I was like, nice. I just got announced on SNL. I'm going to go to the club, get some drinks. It'll be fun. And uh, on the way to the club, I was in a train, and I got a text from my agent that was like, did you say the word, uh, the C word? And I was like, no, I would never. I don't say that word. And then she was like, here's a clip of you saying it. It was literally a video of me saying it. And I was like, all right, maybe I said it. (laughs) (laughs) Looks like I said it. Yeah, looks uh, like I but it was I was because I was in a train. I was going in and out of service, so like I was getting like texts that were like, "Did you say this?" And then like twenty minutes later, I'd be like, "You need to call me." <laughs> like, and then the whole way. And by the time I got to the stand, like TMZ was there. No, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. bro, they met you there. They yeah. got there before you did. Yeah, get the fuck crazy. out of it was here. Crazy. Yeah, that and so you walk into that situation. Yeah, and I'm dude. I'm going from open mics. To literally TMZ the next day. And comics like, oh, you're in trouble. And so you got a little bit of a heads up what was happening just because of the the shady communication Mm -hmm. on the train. And you walk into that. Yeah. And do you talk to them right there? No, I didn't talk to them. I just walked in. Did they come to you and ask you for Hey, man, what's going on? You know, they're like nice. Mm -hmm. TMZ is like nice to you. Yeah. They're like, hey, man, it's tough. What's going on? You got anything to say? They try to like bait you in to be like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. so yeah, just that was it. And then I, w- I went on stage like while it was all happening, and I was like, "I think things are bad." <laughs> like I was like, "I, don't th- I think I'm that? in trouble." Yeah, I was like, "I don't think this is good." <laughs> it was funny too because everybody, including Lauren Michaels, the whole time was like, "You're gonna be fine. Don't worry. This happens." Really? Yeah, they were all confident because every everybody they've had the last couple years gets this treatment. Like they always have one or two. Like something will come up where they tweeted something a while ago, but it was never a video of them saying a slur. You know what I mean? Right. So the whole time I was like, no, I'm not. Like, this is bad. If they're going through my podcast, like, this is bad. Uh, so I was kind of like, I'm definitely getting fired the whole time. Um, yeah, that's – and then that night I'm on the phone with, like, Lauren and all these people telling me what to do. Like, don't apologize. Apologize. Say all this shit. What's Lauren telling you? Lauren's – so NBC is saying, here's the statement you need to say. And it's like a written out, like, what I said was inexcusable. I've learned from my mistakes. Like, that, like, paragraph, you need to tweet this. 
And I was like, I'm not going to tweet that. Like that's, you know, that's crazy. Um, but then Lauren was like, I just need you to give me something. So I was like, all right, that's fair. That's reasonable. And uh, so, yeah, I just had like five minutes. He was like, I need something in the next 10 minutes. So I just sat there and typed something out. And sounded, tweeted it? Yeah. <laughs> that and, was it. And that didn't do anything for him? No, fuck no. I mean, I sent it to him first, and he was like, all right, yeah, we'll we'll try. Post this. See how it goes. And there's no apologizing. You know, nobody – If I, there's nothing I could have said in that moment where any – all these people that wanted my job – would have been like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. When you tweet an apology, there's no, it's not going to do anything. No. They're, they're going to just rip it apart. They're going to be like, he doesn't care. Right. You know? Now it's more fodder to tear yeah. apart. Yeah. Yeah. So then when do you get the actual call that you're not going to be a uh, cast member? Like four days later. <sighs> yeah. But you it was, are you just fucking shitting yourself, like dying it inside? Was just, like, I wasn't like... It was just very surreal. It wasn't like I wasn't – I mean, don't get me wrong. I was extremely stressed out. Like I'll see a video or an interview of me from back then, and I'm like, oh, man, I was different. Like I was mm-hmm. fucked up. It does fuck you up. Like getting – I can't. Getting like canceled or whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, but it's yeah, more it than being up. canceled. It's it's this rise, this you know historic show, yeah. this childhood dream, and canceled – all in, in one. like a week. Yeah, all in, <laughs> yeah, the, in yeah, a week. Yeah. Like there's more than yeah. just canceling and being canceled. And But see, here's the thing that I – look, I'm a student of the game, so I know who you are, and I, we have never met before today. And I've like watched your um, your your fucking sketches right now. So you're killing it, dude. Your oh, shit you. is – it is funnier than the stuff I see on SNL. Oh, so, thank you. Um, it's nice to hear though that they thought that they were going to be all right and they thought you really were going to make it through this. So what, yeah. What's the who called you to tell you no? Uh, Lauren. Lauren himself. Yeah, he yeah, did. yeah. Well, what it was did he first. Say? It was like because they always talked to somebody first. He was just like, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And that's it. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I had a feeling. But he was. So then you you have time to write like a. They offered me. I could either resign. I could resign, or they could fire me. They offered me that. And I was like, nah, you're going to have to, you guys are going to have to fire me. Yep. This is going to be on you. Um, and did they? Yeah, they fired me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, is that what they actually, it's put in the trades or, or whatever, like, that it was a, f- they fired you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, so then I got to, they, they like timed it so that we're going to say we let you go. You can time it so, like, I put something out at the same time. Like, it's all very – it's weird. It's orchestrated. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And they're like, let's see. Can you show us the tweet you're going to put out about getting fired? I was like, yeah, here it is. <laughs> like, this is what I'm going to say. And they're like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. And what's it been like seeing, like, Che and those guys on the scene since then? Oh, I, I get along with all those guys. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't fire me. No, In but fact, I mean – I think, like, like I've heard – <laughs> rumors I, I, it's not true i don't know if it's true but like him and like some of the other cast members like tried to keep me yeah so yeah i, I like those guys so what happens to you personally after this like where do you go emotionally personally this first day after this uh me yeah, i don't know i do you consider like, quitting do you consider no, none of no, that never okay. never once Good. was like i'm done right um because, I mean, there was a part of me that was like, this is it, not cool, but, like, this is crazy. Like, I, this is all, like, I was on CNN and, like, it was crazy. So, yeah, I, you I were everywhere. I wouldn't say it was cool, but it was <laughs> it was definitely, like, exciting in some sense, you know, mm-hmm. to go from zero to that. Um, I was worried, you know, you're worried about, like, other things coming out or, like, you just get very paranoid. And I was going to say, still very, PTSD? Oh, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. imagine. Like, oh, they're going to go dig through something I said and take it this way and yeah, put that I mean, out there that, and just keep piling it on. I put that special out yesterday and all day. I was like, it's the same feel. I did Rogan's podcast and it was the same feeling. I was like, what are they going to pull out of this? This is going to be something bad. And then I put out that special yesterday and I was like, this is going to be bad. So, it, like, it does. I don't want to get too emotional. Yeah. But it does take something from you. Like, I don't. I lost a lot of joy in doing things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do you find yourself overthinking now for to sure. an extent? For sure. Do you think it's a detriment though? Uh, or do you I don't, work past I don't, it? I don't overthink things in comedy. Like uh, 
like I'll do something and say something and put it out. And then when I'm done, then I'm like, oh, fuck. What right. did I just do? Right. What did I put out? Here's how it's going to be taken. This is bad. People, And it's it's a, it's a tough to explain to people because every, every fan's like, fuck it, dude. Fuck them. Put it out. And it's like, I don't – it fucked me up, yeah. you know? I can imagine it, it was, fucked yeah. you up. Good. Tell me about your parents then. You said what happened with they them? They were good. They were like proud and supportive. And even when I got like in trouble, they were like, we're with you. Don't worry. So that was nice. Yeah. And then my dad did like a fucking interview with like a local paper. Nah, and I called him. I was like, listen, don't talk to anybody. Because <laughs> that's what happens is it, like as soon as you're in the spotlight like that, everybody somehow gets everybody you know's phone number. Like they, I was getting phone calls from everybody. My family was getting phone calls. Really? Yeah. Out of nowhere. Like Just news. For quotes and yeah, shit. They're trying to get you to say something. And so I like had to call my dad and be like, make sure you don't say anything. And he was like, ah. And I was like, what? And he was like, I just did an interview. I was like, don't do any fucking interviews. He did an interview. He did an interview that was like, my son did nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, it was right, nice. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> it was very yeah, sweet. That's good. But yeah, I think they were shell shocked too, you know? Because they, they, it was kind of like West Point where they had like, a lot of time to be probably proud and yeah. I don't want to say braggadocious, but they were, you know, they're with their friends. They're right. like, our son's going to West Point. They're like, they had a couple days to be like, our son's going to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, great. And then as soon as you get canceled, everyone's like, fucking loser, <laughs> you know? Now, has that ever happened to anyone on SNL before where they've been no. cast and then fired? No. Prior to actually getting to the show? No. You're the, you're his, the only Your one. history? Yes. You made SNL history. I did bro. make SNL Without history. Without ever setting foot <laughs> yeah, on yeah, the stage. Yeah. No, you yeah. set foot on that stage. I did. You all did. Technically, I did yeah, set did. foot on the stage. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird to say because it makes me look like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to sound like, a, like, they're all nice. Everybody at SNL was nice to me. There's no real hard, I don't have any hard feelings with SNL. Right. They tried. And I understood why they fired me. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but, I wasn't. But I do, I, I loved seeing, like, uh, I watched Norm back you. I saw a yeah, lot of social. Cool. So tell me about that. Who um, who from the old cast came forward and, and supported you? Um, I remember seeing David Spade and Bill Burr and Jim Jeffries did, like, a clip on his show about it. Mm -hmm. And that was cool to watch. That was nice. Uh, but, yeah, like, Norm... McDonald, that, like he who's was very like, vocal who's like one of my, he's my guy. I right? love that guy. I mean, come on. Yeah. He's incredible. In fact, I just watched his special last week again. It's, it's yeah. the best, dude. And uh, yeah, that was cool. Because he put out a thing like while I was, he tweeted something like, congratulations. Yes. And it was like while I was definitely getting fired. And he didn't think I was going to get fired. Right. So he was like, oh, I didn't think, you like, it almost seemed like he was being a dick to outside people, like tweeting like. People are trying to ruin it. This is the best day of your life. Like right. while I was getting fired, um, but yeah, he called, talked to yeah everybody. They were all pretty supportive. It was yeah, it was crazy. It was wild. So what's the? How long did you wait to get back on stage and do stand? -up? Oh, that night I that just night. kept doing it. Yeah, and and people did were like, you talk about it on stage that night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, did yeah, you for sure? Yeah, I, there was a night. The night I got fired, I went and did a show and Ari. It was me and Ari on stage talking about it. And it was pretty cool. It was fun. But then, of course, there's reporters going to shows, recording everything you say, posting it, posting articles about it. It's like, damn. How long was that happening? That was probably about a month. But it still sticks with you. Coming to F. It still sticks with you. So now, like, and, like, on stage, I'd see people, like, talking to each other because that's what happens in clubs. Like, people talk at the table. And I'd be like, are they fucking talking shit? Like, it's just in your head for so sure. long where you're like, everybody hates me. It's a negative yeah. thing, a negative thing. Yeah, yeah, which is not good to have on stage. No. To, like, look out to a crowd of people and be like, half of them hate me. Right. Yeah, it's wild. But nobody ever, nobody said one thing to my face ever. No? Never. You've never had anyone come up to you? No, no, no one blow has, back no one has ever in person come up and been like, fuck you, ever. So, that's how it works. Yeah. Everybody just tweets. And then when they see you in person, they're like, oh, hey, hey how are yeah. you? These fake fucks. Yeah. But it, that was another thing that I like, I understand because I have a podcast when I was an open micer in Philly, trashing everybody, every single comedian. I'd be like, oh, they fucking suck. I'm fucking better than that. Like all the time. So like when people would do that to me, I'd be like, all right, I get it. I understand. I know, I know the place of like insecurity that comes from to like trash another comic on your podcast. It's just, you know. Yeah. 
So like I get it. I, I don't no hard feelings towards any of them either. So <laughs> like creatively and strategically, how has this changed you? And because you obviously pivoted and you've moved yeah. right forward. So what you know? Do you work a different way now? Do you no? So what it what did it do? Did it motivate you more in the long run? Do you think it's yeah, I would I would assume it motivated because I don't know how else I would have been if I did or didn't get it. Would you, you know? have done these sketches and stuff that you do now had it not been for this whole SNL experience? I don't experience? think so. I think if I got if I didn't even get offered SNL, nobody would have ever looked into my podcast or tried to sure. get me in trouble because that was like one of the few jobs I could have gotten where people were like, "Look at how shitty this guy is." Um, so no, I probably would have been doing acting like tv shit and all that because at the time i was i was getting a lot you were of auditions and stuff like that so yeah i probably would have just been in shows you know but do you find like for instance with your special right now that's yeah. out on what your youtube yeah right do you find do you prefer it that way that you just shot uh, your, did you even try to shop it around or did you just say no Fuck i didn't it, it was exactly. funny i'm my not agents, either yeah my agents were like let's let's hold off on this let's try to shop this to like hbo or netflix and i was like they're not gonna fucking buy it right nobody's gonna buy this for and also it's gonna be a year of emails yeah. back and forth and bullshit for True. to get a no then this shit could have been up a year ago yeah yeah of course uh and the goal is just put it out on youtube and hopefully the next special mm -hmm. gets picked up right you know right because at this point now i kind of have to prove that i'm good you know, a lot of times uh, they just kind of pick you. They tap you. They're like, all right, this is our guy. We're going to put him on Comedy Central and HBO. Whereas now I kind of have to make my own stuff and be like, here's a body of work. Now can I be on right. something? Um, and that's a cool route to go. I'm all right it is. That. But even if you can't be on these other things, yeah, there matter. are places you can be. Of course. And YouTube is a viable place to be. Of course. That, uh, honestly, you're probably getting more views on your sketches there Certainly. than SNL is. Certainly. You know? Well, I don't know about views compared to NBC, but. I, I would say it's probably competitive, to be honest. I hope. That'd be nice. But uh, you know, it as used far to be as... when you pitch shows, it was, um, well, we're cable. We don't have a lot of money. It was all yeah. that bullshit. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I remember being in a meeting one time and somebody said that. And I was like, well, can you, t t what what uh, networks can do your kids know? What what network is your kid yeah, yeah, watching? Yeah. They're not watching NBC, ABC, no, CBS, or fucking Fox. They're watching Nickelodeon. They're watching MTV. They're watching sure. all these other things. So get the fuck out of here with that cable. You are where all the money is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, YouTube's, yeah, it's perfectly viable. Like, I think the views I would get on YouTube versus if I sold my special to, like, a streaming service is definitely better. Mm -hmm. Definitely better. Mm -hmm. And in the long term, like, getting... I don't know how much money. If I would have sold it to a streaming service, you get like forty grand or something. I have well, no idea. Did you ever read the fine print that appears when you start browsing in incognito mode? It says that your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, or your internet service provider. How can they call it incognito? To really stop people from seeing the sites you visit, you need to do what I do and use ExpressVPN. Think about all the times you used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or a hotel or even at your parents' house. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit could be logged by the admin of that network, and that's still true even when you're in incognito mode. I mean, do you really want your parents to see what you've been looking at? You definitely don't. What's more, your home internet provider can also see and record your browsing data. In the U.S., they're legally allowed to sell that data to advertisers. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays just that, private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices and is super easy to use. The app literally has one button. You tap it to connect and your browsing activity is secure from prying eyes. So stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash honeydew. Use my link at expressvpn.com dot com slash honeydew to get three extra months free. That's e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash honeydew to learn more. Keeps is back, and you know the guys at the studio are using Keeps. I have friends that use Keeps uh, because two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. That's young, y'all. That's young. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair, all right? Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications are delivered straight to your door 
every three months. All right. So you're not having to, to leave your home. It's a low cost. Treatment started just 10 bucks a month and keeps does offer generic versions. Keeps has more five star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. All right. So treatments can take four to six months to see results. So you got to act fast. And here's what you got to do. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com. That's K E E P S.com slash honeydew to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K E E P S.com slash honeydew to get your first month free. K E E P S.com slash honeydew. Now let's get back to the do. What I love about this, 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 podcasting has also opened up this community of comedians that I love like getting to sit with you and all these other guys, like the New York guys, the LA guys. And the thing I like about it is like, it's now it's peer to peer and it's direct to consumer. Yeah. We are helping one another and we're putting it right out there for everybody else. Right. Yeah. That's you don't have to wait for a Netflix or an HBO or whoever, Amazon to give you this green light to be put out there. You can go to your friends and do their shows and then put it right out to all the people who love you. So I love the, it's all direct to consumer and peer to peer. You don't need that bullshit anymore. And what's nice is when you put like the special I put on YouTube, it's just, it's shared by every, every comedian, everybody's pulling for each other. And and it's, it's pretty nice. It's less competitive because I I would imagine I've only, I've only been, this is the first special I ever put out. I've only been kind of headlining within this era of comedy. I would imagine before when like four guys got a special a year, it was pretty fucking cutthroat and comedians would probably be like, ah, fuck that guy. Right. Fuck this. Now who could, who could be mad that I put a YouTube special out? Right. No, anybody can do it. Anyone can do it. So it's not like it's I'm taking right. someone's spot. I'm just Look, literally there was doing room it. for all of us before. Sure. There was. Yeah. There's so much more room for yeah. all of us with the internet now. Yeah. I mean, there's so much. And if you don't like it, fucking move on. Yeah. There's plenty more for you to see. Of course. So nice, man. I, I you know, I'm I really think it's impressive and uh you know, you've had to dig out of quite a hole. Yeah. And to keep your focus. Yeah. And to stay positive. Like what did you what are some of the things you did to stay positive during that time? nothing (laughs) i'm pretty negative (laughs) literally nothing stand up that's it but what gave see that's it's the only thing through my hardest times like i I remember splitting from my daughter's mom and stuff and just freaking out about losing feeling like i'm gonna lose my kid and oh man and it was stand up it was not i mean it didn't matter whether i was on that stage for 12 minutes or an hour for whatever reason, none of my troubles go through my mind. None sure. of them. None. Not one. And I'm like, man, that's the only place I'm 100% free is up there where I don't think about the bullshit yeah. in my life. That's fucking crazy. How, yeah. do I, how do I get that time to be more? Yeah, either that or drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? yeah, you can just yeah. drink right out of that. <laughs> did don't, you drink yeah. more during oh, that? Did you, yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. so you went you, – did you, I didn't like turn to the bottle, but yeah. I mean, I, well – it was also, it coincided with me moving to New York and doing shows every night. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing shows every night and you drink, you're going to drink. Yeah. You know, so that, yeah. And and then I finally got a little bit of money because normally uh, up until SNL, I had zero dollars. Did they pay you anything from that? Yeah. I got like the first season's worth. Oh, okay. So they yeah. paid you for a full season? Yeah. Uh, they pay you qu- What half, are you allowed to you say? You get half a season. I got $50,000. Oh, wow. Said, All yeah. right. But at the time, that was... I mean, it's at least it's something to keep you motivated. 50, and, 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 dude, that was the most money I ever yeah, had in my life. Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to go quick in New York if you don't go. Oh, in New York, gig. I got rid of it. I spent it in a month. I bought, <laughs> <laughs> I bought a Chevy Cruze and paid my student debt. <laughs> that that was sucks it. that you had to give it to fucking student debt. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Cool. Gave it to student debt. I paid the whole thing. God damn. Um, Should have stayed at West Point. Yeah, that's you would kind have of no the, student debt. Truly, bro. no the, student debt. Yeah, but I might be dead. You probably would be dead. <laughs> yeah, so I would have been a big fucking You'd target. Be soft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'd be fucking you up out there, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, when did you realize, or did you have a moment during that where you're like, "Oh, this is it's getting to me more than I thought it was"? Or I don't know. You said I, it fucks with you. It really fucks sure. with you. But when are the moments that would get to you? It's almost like. It's almost like when you're depressed, like you don't realize it until you're done. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So like I didn't, I didn't realize it until like recently how fucked up like 
And it's still, it's still. It what do you look back and see? You mentioned seeing yourself on an episode yeah, 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 where yeah, you just saw seeing yourself. like a clip or something. Yeah, where I'm like, oh, I'm definitely different. Uh, it it affects like relationships for sure. Like all of a sudden, the only thing I cared about was stand up versus other. You know, it 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 fucks you up. I don't know how else to. It's almost impossible to describe to anybody that hasn't experienced. Yeah, that. but. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's 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 exactly like being like depressed, where you like while you're in it. I was kind of like blocking it out. I was like, people would be like, "Are you all right?" I'd be like, "I'm fine." Like the whole time, I was like, "This is nothing. I'm fine." And then when you get done, you're like, "Damn, I was fucked up. That hurt." You know? Yeah, I mean, you're literally pushed off the mountaintop. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and people are happy and happy about. People it. are very happy. Yeah, they for are. sure. Did you have any? But you never got confronted. You said nobody came. No, up to nobody your face ever confronted me. No. Did you ever hear any shit behind your back? Uh, People on Twitter, you're like, I don't even know this fucking person. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, a bunch of these comics would come out and be like, "Fuck him." I met him once. He's a piece of shit. It's like, <laughs> I met him what once, the he's fuck? A piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've had several comedians like <laughs> that tweet. line is fucking. Gross. One lady tweeted she met me for like she, I knew when she met me. She met me for like 15 minutes. She was like, yeah, fuck him. I never liked that guy. It's like, you're a never. crazy person. We've met for 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, it's funny because I have fans now. So, like, if somebody tweets at me or talks shit now, people are just like, is this you? And it's just a tweet of them saying the N-word, like, two years ago. And it's like, oh, shut the yeah, fuck yeah, up, you go, idiot. Yeah, right, yeah. I don't think people understand how this works. Like, if you throw stones like that, if you're like, hey, look at what this guy, fuck that guy for saying that, people are just going to look – what you've done. Yeah. Let it's me go like, back through your social here's media. Here's 10 minutes of for... you screaming the N-word on a podcast. <laughs> you fucking dunce. Yeah. 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 So I try not to I try not to do that to people. I try not to be like, hey, look at this. But every once in a while, I'll get someone. You know? Do you think it motivated you in a way to, to, to do more? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, it's hard because I, I talk to some comics about this. I talked to Louie about this, Louie CK, about like how I was like, well, now I, I want to prove myself. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I want to prove that people were, A, that they were right to pick me because that was kind of a, that was kind of a prevailing theme where people would be like, he would have never done well there. This was a mistake, all that stuff. Uh, so there's a part where you like want to prove them wrong and be good. And uh, he was like, you don't have to, don't, he's like, you don't have to prove anything. You do it for yourself. So like I've tried to I've tried to adopt that, like I'm not trying to prove prove to what to who that to type you. of thing. That's yeah, that's it. kind of all it is. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Do you see yourself? If I hate talking seriously about anything, as you have to. Bro. <laughs> this is you tough, dude. To. That's all right. You're doing Getting great. Uncomfortable. I want to know. Um, do you see yourself acting again in other things if the opportunity presents itself? Are you interested, or are you just like yeah, is it I'd, sour I'd, to I'd taste? I'd like for to do it? that. I'd like to do that, but I'm not. I I would imagine it's not going to be on like a sitcom or like a family show. So hopefully, it would just be a a, a project that would. Again, be with like my friends, which is kind of what we're doing. We, these the guys yeah. that we do those Gillian Keep sketches with. That's John McKeever and Tommy Pope and all my my friends from back home. That like we just can make stuff ourselves. And you and do a great job. We're perfectly capable of making it ourselves. Uh, and then why not? Right? Yeah. You and, and we don't, don't have to listen to any executive notes. No. There's none of this bullshit. Now just, somebody bought one of our shows. Then yes. You, then you got to put Absolutely. up with the bullshit. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, they're yeah. paying you to put up with the bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, and we're perfectly capable. Now that we, we have a Patreon on Matt and Shane's and I'm making money from touring and we make enough money that we can produce like pretty high quality stuff. They're very high yeah. quality. Yeah. yeah. Your shit looks great. Yeah. It's it nice. does. It really does look good. Do you, any of the SNL people hit you up about your stuff when they yeah. see it? They do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fucking I sent them to Lauren. That's, do you really? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah, he say? Yeah. He thinks they're good. So that's got to feel good. Yeah. 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 He's. Have you heard from him since? Yeah, I talked to him. You do? Yeah, I've, I've sent him. I've talked to him about those sketches and things like that. Yeah, and he t he still makes the time or whatever. He does. Huh? That's I great. Th yeah, he he goes out of his way to like make some time, That's which is nice. nice. Yeah, you know, it's the least he could. Do. <laughs> it's <laughs> the nice. least. He could. <laughs> it's not the least he could do. I mean, literally the least he could have done was just like, yeah, see ya. Yeah, they could which have is, fired which you, is what you zero would have, Which is what probably. you would kind of expect. But I, I think, was surprised to hear you got money. I think they. I think there was some accountability on their part to be like, sorry about that. We just picked up, picked you up and got you killed. 
You know what I mean? That's yeah. like, that is kind of like a, if they had a soul, which they might, they're like, all right, that was fucked up. Sorry about that. Good luck with your life. Good luck with everything. Here's else. a Chevy Cruze. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Get a back Chevy out Cruise. there. <laughs> Time to go home and wash dishes again. <laughs> the car of your dreams. That's it, man. Did you even, con- you never considered doing that or anything though, did you? Doing SNL? No, or what, quitting? Or, no, yeah, no, 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 no. No, I mean, that was, what, what else would I fucking do? Especially that. I especially like, now I got that on my resume. Yeah, yeah what are you going to do? Coming now? home, if you Google me, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting a fucking job anyway. I never Google myself ever. Mm. You will not find Ryan Sickler in my Google search. My Google. Whew. Fuck that, dude. I search. I still look. Do you? Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it today. Don't watch out. It's never good. It's not going to be good. I don't want to do it. It's not going to be good. The last good. time somebody did it, it said, they said, they sent me something that said, Ryan Sickler, wife. And I've never been married. I've been engaged, but never married. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's not even real. Mm. That's not even real. And then all these other, my, uh, someone sent me what I'm worth, my net worth. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, who the fuck is this Ryan that. Sickler? Because yeah, that true. is not my ass. Yeah, there's some weird, another one. when your name gets into that, like, ether, ether, whatever that is, they, there's all these, like, weird bots that, like, put up there's there's i don't know how even how to describe them. there's one of mine that's like clearly just an indian bot that's like he is very rich he drives several cars <laughs> several it's like all this <laughs> you know it's broken english like yeah. uh <laughs> but yeah dude i still read i read the comments i do all that yeah what's the um what's the one thing that that sticks with you the most from it like is there a comment that you really stuck at you or mm. that you think about no not one in particular and i don't one, know when you think about this now all right yeah. so let me ask you this question the frequency of the amount of times you think about this incident oh now, daily it's still daily oh of course it's not any less every other it's day it's definitely less it's definitely less so it used to be all day times, long every yeah, day oh yeah and the time is now less per day less per day certainly and what do you think about during the day? Like when these thoughts cross <laughs> your <Dame>. mind. <laughs> Notre Dame Toledo this week. <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> we got Toledo yeah. coming to town. Uh, what do I think about? Yeah, no, I don't when know. you I think just... about this, what do you think about? Huh. I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. Do you have regret? No. No, definitely no regret. Okay. About like, because I would have done the podcast. Yeah. No matter what. I regret uh no i guess i don't good i don't think i mean i'm not asking you i'm just curious yeah i don't think so it's it, that's one well, thing what i'm what i'm i say good because you're not i don't hear you saying i regret losing snl i regret you haven't you're saying no no i that's one thing i've been kind of proud of myself about is not regretting that stuff like not letting that get to me there's been a cut there was a i'll tell you what the first like so i got hired september september 12th and then I think the first episode was like two weeks later. Oh, wow. Okay. So like right away, I remember that night. I was home by myself. I watched that first who episode. Uh, who was it? Might have been Woody Harrelson. Oh. I, I could be wrong on that. And you watched oh, that? Oh, fuck. I forget. I know who's the girl who sings bad guy. I'm a bad. Billie Eilish. Oh, she yeah, was the so musical yeah. guy. I remember that. I remember sitting there watching it like, damn. I would have been there. And like... Do you watch it still? No, it's it's on. It's usually on like at clubs. Yeah, like when you're doing stand up, you get done there. It's like on in the bar or something. I'll see it and be like, "This shit's fucking garbage." It's wild. <laughs> it's so though, bad, dude. It There's is some. Bad. There there are some sketches that are very good, and I know the people that work there that are very very funny, talented people. But you know, it's rehearsed. It's on national television. It's it's like it's live. So of course, it's going to be clunky. And they've given, I think they've stopped trying to, I don't know, Lauren said something interesting where he was like, everybody's favorite is when they were in high school. That's when they're like, that's when it was funny. And that's always been the case. Mm -hmm. And now I think recently it's even more so because now it's even, it's even way more political, I I believe, than it used to be, you know? Like it felt like they used to make fun of both sides pretty. Oh, yeah. Like they'd have both presidential candidates That's look like right. a fucking Mondale idiot. That's right, Mondale and Reagan, they would bash yeah, them Yeah, so up. they had yeah. like they had Alec Baldwin as Trump and he was like a fat dickhead idiot. And then they had Jim Carrey come on and be like, yeah, that's right. I'm I'm cool, Joe Biden. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, Joe Biden can't talk. Yeah, Just get all. a guy who's incoherent to yeah. be him if you want to make fun of him. Make fun of both. Yeah, of don't make right. Jim Carrey cool wearing yeah. aviators as Joe Biden. Um. 
Yeah, and they they did they did yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg dying. They were like, Ugh. it's like, dude, be funny, shut up. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to. I try not to trash SNL because that you know, it looks uh, it looks yeah to me it looks kind of fucking petty. Yeah, like a sore loser. Like I got fired. So you know. Yeah, but I will say, like, I don't know how many people have really gone through this cancel culture thing and and still stayed where you are, kept your head level. You seem like you've kept your head above the water. Mm -hmm. You're moving forward successfully. Um, that's not e it's not easy to do that just regularly sure. in this goddamn business. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and so, I gotta, so to do, I gotta it, try to give myself some credit. You do. That's what I want to say. Like, you, you, I'm not. I look. I, I say this all the time. The other day yesterday for the first time and i can't tell you how long i looked in the mirror and i was like hey good job <laughs> yeah, you're doing yeah, yeah, good yeah, yeah. you lost weight yeah doing the right tours about the to star park you know because i never do that i always look in the mirror if i do and say like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. god damn dude every time you know but it's I will never the love about the the moving forward thing and having gotten canceled i got canceled i had nothing before i got canceled so that's new <laughs> No, almost no one has that. That's a good point. So yeah, you're not. So obviously, losing. I'm going to keep moving forward. Yeah. Everybody else had to give something up. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, a lot of like, not many people have been canceled for something they've said. Most of the time, it's you get canceled for something you've done. That's interesting. I'm yeah, one of the few so, guys huh? to get really fired for something they said. It's like me and Kramer. <laughs> yeah, his was vicious. You know what? Though his was vicious, but also his, I, I we was were that at, where was that at? Was Laugh that at the I, so I did a show there last night, and I was like, that was the first time I ever did a show there. Oh, I was yeah. like, damn, this is where it happened. It is. <laughs> and you know in, what? We like, were just damn. I was talking to some comics about this the other night too. Like that happened a while ago. That had to be. It was like one of the first times early it cell filmed. phone yeah, video very first or time, or man. something, right? Or he camera got, caught like he got drilled on the first camera video. And someone was telling me that when TMZ <laughs> or whoever the Hollywood uh, yeah. does their tours, when they stop in front of the Laugh Factory, it's not like you'll see. Come they go. This is where Michael Richards. Uh, yeah, this is it. Had his well, it's funny too, it's like, not. This is where you could see blah blah yeah. blah. You know? I, when I saw the stage last night for the first time, I was like, hmm. There's the balcony, dude. There it is. That's it. There it is. That's where Kramer went down. Went nuts. And so he had like he had to go. He went on TV and like on Letterman and like cried kind of and apologized. Which I'm not judging him because I understand the stress of that. Uh, but he he was already famous, right? So he had a lot to lose. He did, and he was losing it. You could watch him lose it. Like with me, I didn't lose anything. So it was a little easier. Like your American Express contract didn't. Yeah, just get I didn't torn even. Yeah, I had I had zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had zero dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't like, oh, my life's in shambles. I was like, no, I'm still living in a hallway in Queens. Yeah. Back to I was like, wow, that was a crazy week. What <laughs> you a know week. What I mean? yeah. yeah. What a yeah. week in comedy well, for you. Back to where dude. I was God. last week. <laughs> last week, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. And but I'm saying it's impressive that it didn't fucking derail you and Yeah, well, I think I think one thing it could have done is I could have leaned into being like a fucking free speech guy and like I'm I am right wing I am a true, like you know what I mean and that could have been very lucrative but yeah that's not who I am I wasn't gonna become like a and there's nothing wrong with being free speech because free speech is important yeah obviously but like I but think, it's not gonna be your mantra moving no I think forward, I think yeah. as, I think as soon as you get sucked in to being like if I if I like let being canceled define who I was and like talked about it i mean i talk about it on every fucking podcast but if you let it like consume who you are and what you're creating that's how you lose you know what i mean that's yeah. like actually that's well getting said, canceled yeah. Yeah. meanwhile the only way to not get canceled is to just keep moving and keep doing comedy because that's what my fucking job is that's it like if i let that consume me and i was like every day i was like i don't know you know what i mean yeah of course yeah um, so I didn't tell you this before we started the show, but it's something I ask everybody their first time on the show. Um, especially now after everything we've talked about. Um, and that's advice you would give to your 16 year old self. And it could be anything you fucking want it to be. Yeah. But I'm curious what sitting here through everything you've been through mm -hmm. now, going back to your 16 year old self, what would you say? Uh, don't cry at boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gonna, just quit. Don't let everyone ball. watch you cry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go look. I'm happy with where I'm at career, like in my life. So everything kind of led me to this. 
Like maybe if I went to a regular D2 school, played football there, I'd be a salesman in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I like what I do now. So kind of everything got me here. It uh, goes the way it's supposed to go. Maybe I'd say like sometimes. everybody in the house knows you're jerking off in the shower. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Everyone yeah. in the family knows. That was revealed to me recently. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, my sisters were just like, you know, everyone knew you were jerking off in the shower. And I was like, what? <laughs> They're telling you I was that. like, how do you guys know? They were like, you were in the shower for an hour every day. <laughs> so I'd let 16-year-old that. I tell my stepson, yeah. his mom, I'm like, he's, he's jerking off in there. She's like, he is not. I'm like, like trust me. Yes, he is. He's been in there yeah. for 45 minutes. And P.S., I was 16 with a dick. Yeah. He is definitely in there doing that right now. Yeah, I'm like, how that. come every time we walk in, he's taking a shit for 45 minutes, but it never smells like shit? No. Never smells like shit in here. He's cranking one out. Yeah. Dude. Uh yeah. I don't know. What would you say? What'd you go with? I'm sure you've had to my sixteen year old yeah. self. Oh man. I don't I don't know. I don't remember mine, but I know sixteen was when my father died. So oh, I tough. would definitely say just I mean, I know I would say stick this shit out because it gets way fucking sure. better. Sure. But it's gonna suck for about thirty fucking years. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd your father pass if you don't mind me asking? Uh hard it's well. It was ruled a heart attack when he passed, but then... It was COVID. It was COVID. <laughs> no. This was 89. Yeah. So years later, when I turned his same age, 42, six years ago, I fucking start having all these health problems, kidney mm. stones, all this shit. They take me in. It's They're thinking I have cancer, all this shit. Six months into testing, they find out I have this like blood disease in my legs. It's called factor five light, and, and it's just my blood's prone to being thicker, which makes mm. me susceptible to clots. And now going back through everything, they're like, there's a really good chance that your father's death wasn't a heart attack. And it yeah. may have actually been this because my mom doesn't have it and neither do my brothers. Wow. So there's a chance 30 some years later, yeah. I find out that his shit was you know, yeah, maybe was something, something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to watch my shit. 16 year old me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Invest in Pfizer. Pfizer? Or vaccines. Fucking, you can make some know. money. I don't know. People talk about crypto. I'm like, mm, I still wouldn't get my money. I would, you True. know what? So, yeah. You know what? If I'm going to do an investment, I would do, you know, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, the bass yeah, player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made more money back in the day investing in Starbucks than he did on GNR. Damn. And he got yeah, in Starbucks early on Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks is a good one. Yeah. Starbucks early. Is a good one. yeah. And then yeah. it just kaboom. Because if I was 16, I couldn't be like, delete the podcast. No. Nope. I'd be 16. I'd be like, what the fuck are you? What's a Don't podcast? Don't cry at fucking West Point. Don't cry at West Point. That's a great one. Stop crying in front of people, <laughs> you fucking good. giant. <laughs> Did you cry when you got canceled? Uh, no, I don't think so. At least in private? I I, I swear to God. <laughs> I believe you. I swear to God, I don't remember. I remember times getting like that, like, <laughs> you know, like when you like lose your breath a little. Or <laughs> when it goes... <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember this is the closest I came. I was I was drunk with some comics at the stand and we were fighting about it. And I was like, yeah, that, and that I went to the dude, I was like, I got to go to the fucking bathroom, dude. I can't cry at the fucking club. Thank you for coming Bro, on. Thanks for, for having me. This yeah, was fun. please promote everything again. Yeah, just check out uh, Gillian Keeves' YouTube channel. That's my special. And then all the sketches me and my friends are making. And then uh, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. All right. Yeah. Check out that special. And uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.